Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, so this one's an exciting one. This is a comparison of the Verizon fixed wireless internet and the T-Mobile 5G fixed wireless internet. So all of them use 5G, but as far as the name goes, but all of their 5Gs are different. And I'll get into that a little bit here. I'm not going to go into the details of what exact settings it is or how to set these up stuff like that this is going to be a high level uh, i've had the t-mobile for about a year and a half i've had both you know this gateway obviously the nokia one i had the ascii little white 4g one before that and now uh for the past several months i've had this arcadian one since it came out and then on the verizon side i've had their 4g lte service which actually uses the same cube router and this is the 5g service again it's the same hardware it's just different plan that you pay for and then this one is their 5g millimeter wave service so i've used all of these i've tested all of them and in fact uh yes i pay for all of these this is not sponsored no one's giving me this stuff um t-mobile nor verizon pay me for any of this content <laughs> this is all on my own doing so i'm paying for four isps right now and uh it was worse for a while because i think i had six um different ones and plus like a seventh uh, sim card that i was paying for so i could do all this kind of testing to show you guys it got out of hand so i started canceling uh those plans out there but anyways let's get into kind of why you might want to use one versus the other and what are the big pros and cons for these different ones as well as their different uh, hardware here you know should you steer clear of some of them or not so let's first start with availability and that's probably going to be the biggest hurdle that you're going to face is if you can't sign up for the service how can you get it right get a little bit of trick for you there but let's start with this 5g millimeter wave unit from verizon they've made it very hard to even see this i think they're kind of phasing it out because um it's very hard to get millimeter wave service you know it's in specific streets in specific downtown city you know urban environments um, places they really focus on is things like uh, football stadiums, you know, big stadiums where they can service a lot of people. It's really great for that uh, space, but it's not good for neighborhoods because it just doesn't travel far enough. So when it does work, I was just testing it actually um, yesterday down in Ann Arbor where they have it. And I was getting like a gig and a half of download speed and I forget what it was, 180 or something megabits per second up upload. So really impressive, really really low latency. Uh, it's really phenomenal internet if you can get it. But like I said, it's very hard to get. So that's going to knock it out for for most people there of not being able to even get that service. So next is their uh, 4G LTE and 5G plans. And so those you know you can check availability on their websites. Of course, you type in your address and it will tell you. The this 5G one uses their C band. So the C-band 5G is this mid-band, you know, this is like 28 and 39 um, gigahertz for frequency. This mid-band, I forget what it is, so it's it's much lower uh, frequency, but it's still um, kind of like they call it mid mid-band. And this one's fast, it gets good speed. I'll, I'll show that in just a second here. Uh, but again, you might not get it everywhere. You'll type in your address and it'll show you what you can get. But I'll tell you, on um, both of these and the T-Mobile ones, you can put in different addresses. So on the Verizon especially, they let you put in a service address, which is what needs to qualify for the service. Then they let you put in a mailing address for where they actually ship this device to. And the last one is a billing address. So for me, all three of those addresses are different ones on, um, on some of these and um, I don't have a problem with that so let's go to T-Mobile now and you know I've had this Nokia one for a year and a half and it's very inconsistent that, that's really my my main issue with it but this is kind of because T-Mobile is letting pretty much I wouldn't say anyone there are people that don't qualify and I'm not sure why exactly but they're they're letting a lot more people sign up for this so when you go check your availability you're much more likely to have T-Mobile available versus Verizon uh, available. So, um, but once I signed up, 
for this one uh, as a matter of fact and I typed in the same address to try to get a second one it said that I didn't have service availability so I had to change and in fact I was on the phone with the tech service guy and he told me it wasn't available uh, so I suggested to him to actually change my address by one digit so my last digit you know um, you know if it ended in uh, a five I told him to increment it up to a six and uh, lo and behold it worked so you can if your neighbor has it you know for example uh, you can try some different addresses there and see if you can get it uh, but again neither of them are locked to that exact address um, well except for this millimeter wave one it kind of is um, and I'll, I have a specific video on this and actually all these other ones that you can see on my channel if you want to really nail into um, the details there but for T-Mobile it's more available and the big problem there is they are expanding their network rapidly and they're doing updates so again I've had times when this T-Mobile one um, completely went out right for like two weeks it basically was unusable I called them of course right away when I figured out that it was their end that was down and they told me that the tower was being worked and if you read anything online about um, these T-Mobile ones the service reps will often tell you when you're having problems that the tower is being worked and it's not always true but I went out and I said well I know where my tower is at. I'm gonna go drive to it and see if my tower is being worked on and sure enough people were actually climbing the tower at that exact moment so I was you know a sigh of relief but also um, uh, a bit disappointed because that means I was gonna have to wait for my internet to get back up so they are expanding they are growing they are trying to expand their their network out with this one though after they did the update update the modernization of the tower my speeds actually got worse and it's really because of the cells they put up they angled them and they actually were missing my house to get um, the best signal so it actually hurt my speed some and even then my speeds are inconsistent and I'll, I'll actually show you guys some speed tests here in, in a second between these two this one has a lot more latency uh, and um, and then let's talk about the Nokia versus our KD one for the KVD as far as which one is better I'll tell you neither is better really they're about the same they have some pros they have some cons if you get either one it's gonna be about the same the the big differences is the Nokia one has always seemed to be faster for me for download especially than the Arcadian one and the cell metrics have been better with the Nokia one as well so it seems to have better antennas and stuff in there but it's also more cantankerous so it has more issues with the software and just bugs and just odd things you get these these errors on it so you know we're having to restart it all that kind of stuff is uh, is worse on the Nokia the Arcadia one seems to be better but surprisingly enough it even has less settings um, on it itself so you really have no control over things to do and that's something I'll talk about here about Verizon in a second the other thing you'll notice on the T-Mobile is I have cooling fans I have one here I have one here on this bottom one both of these have cooling fans and that's to keep them cool you know some people say hey that doesn't matter that doesn't help it certainly has helped me I've seen it be more consistent uh, faster I also turn off Wi-Fi and stuff on them uh, to help them out and it's not just a gimmick you know these are Etsy products um, you know there's a, a, a little group or company that builds these and sells them you can also put your own just computer cooling fan underneath or on top of them uh, to run them I'll put links to that kind of stuff down in the description but guess what this Verizon one it needs a fan as well the only difference they included it in here from the factory so this actually has a small cooling fan you can't see it but uh, once you take this uh, apart there is a small cooling fan in there that it will kick on if needed this one I actually don't know if it has a cooling fan I haven't looked into it that far uh, I only use this one for a couple hours at a time when I do testing so I, I actually don't um, I don't know if it has a fan or not but it has some really good specs to it so um, let's talk about some high level kind of settings how much adjustability can you get that kind of things out of it for both of these they are um, much more configurable than the T-Mobile stuff and in fact this cube is the most you can I, 
I've set up DMZ on it, so it's sending all of the internet traffic to my personal router. Uh, so it doesn't have firewall active on it, and um, it's not a full bridge mode, so you don't get your public uh, WAN IP to your router, but it does pretty much everything else um, other, other than that. It sends it there, and I turned off the DHCP server on this guy as well, which helped my speeds because that's one less layer of NAT that um, it's kind of going through there. So for these, you really can't do hardly anything. You can like change the Wi-Fi password and name, and in a couple settings, you can turn Wi-Fi off. On this one, easily in the GUI. This one, I released a video of how to turn the Wi-Fi off using PowerShell or Linux commands on there. But there's no bridge mode. There never will be a bridge mode. You don't get a public IPv4 that you can log into remotely, any of that kind of stuff. The Verizon one, I can. So the Verizon one, my DDNS um, setup on my Asus where it gives me like a, you know, a URL that I can type in to access my, uh, my home network from afar, it works. So... It's not just that the cell-based technology doesn't let you uh, remote into your device, but I have like IP cams that on the T-Mobile, they never work when I'm away from home. With Verizon, they work every time. You know, and it's because it can find um, my public IP and then it allows me to connect into it. I'm not using a VPN for that. That's just a direct connection. So, um, if you're hearing what I'm saying, I'm kind of walking towards Verizon here with, with the positives. You know, the the next thing I'll talk about here is things like gaming and voice over IP, all those kind of support things. Verizon, again, has been better with it. It's uh, lower latency, so that's better for gaming. The T-Mobile, very hit or miss. You might have great latency and you're not having a problem, or you might have terrible, like seconds of latency and you're completely unusable for gaming. That's going to vary. I can't tell you if yours is going to be good or bad. Verizon 1 seems to be much better there. And then also they give you more settings. So the firewall settings that you can adjust uh, for voice over IP stuff. I've had people tell me that they have to call into T-Mobile and on the back end they're trying to adjust their firewall settings. With this one, you can just go in there and change it yourself. So that's a big plus to both of these Verizon units here. The next one, let's talk about price real fast. Prices change all the time, so you know this can get outdated. But you know, right now these guys are about fifty bucks a month with auto pay, um, and there are some other discounts you can get here and there. But that's roughly the price, and it's kind of guaranteed. So as long as you don't change the service, that price is going to be fixed. For Verizon, it's a little bit more complicated of a bundle because they have two five G plans and they have a four G LTE plan as well. But for the 5G plan, I think it's $50 a month with auto pay for their regular 5G home. And then their 5G home plus is another $20 more, so $70 a month with the auto pay. But then you can get big discounts like $25 off a month by having a phone unlimited plan. So you can get down to $25 a month uh, for this plan on Verizon which is a steal. I mean, that's an absolute steal. But that's only guaranteed for between two or three years, and um, and then it could go up. And so there's a risk there that you, you take with that as far as getting roped in. So um, the other thing I will say is for external antennas, these ones are not good for it. The T-Mobile ones are much easier to do. The Nokia is the easiest one to take apart and put external antennas up. I have a video for that you can watch. So it's possible as well for the Arcadia one to do external antennas. For this one, it's really not possible. It does have uh, internal antennas, obviously, and they have a, it's like a uh, contact uh, uh, spring. I think it's called a uh, finger spring that it uses to attach or connect the external antennas to the board. And so that's not a easy thing to modify or get to. I mean, if you get into soldering or something, you could do it, but really, I count it out as far as the ability to do an external antenna. And then this one, if you qualify for their service and this doesn't work, this mounts, they tell you to mount it on a window, which is kind of hideous. But if you don't get good service with this in your house, you can call them and they will come in and ins install professionally an external antenna for you. So uh, really, 
on these ones. External antennas don't happen, but yeah, you can get a professional one done on their millimeter wave. And then these, it's all DIY to, to do it. So that is the differences there. As far as which one I'm actually using every day, it's the Verizon. So this Verizon 5G, it's a 5G Home Plus is what I pay for. And then it is, um, you know, been rock solid for me. It's been, you know, fast. It's been quick from a latency standpoint. I can connect to all my devices from outside my home network. I've never had an issue with it. Now I've only had it um, a handful of months, you know, I think three months or so now. So it has time that it can maybe mess up, but it kind of mirrors what I've seen, unfortunately, with my Verizon phone versus my wife's T-Mobile phone. The Verizon one seems to be more consistent and um, just a better network overall. And I would not have said that before I got the 5G C-band one. When I had the 4G LTE one, I would not have recommended anyone to go to it unless it was the only one they could get because of the limitations they put on it. But their 5G C-band has really given them uh, a 5G competitor now to T-Mobile. And I think it, um, it, it <clears throat> sorry, has a lot of merit and promise going forward. So this is what I use for my main one. My secondary, my backup WAN is this Nokia one right now. Again, it's, it is fast, um, but it has latency issues. You have to kind of cool it down. It's super sensitive to how you place it. When I go put this back up on my third floor, I'm going to have to mess with it and get it at just the right angle so I get my best speeds again because I moved it. Um, I should probably mark the table or something with exactly how to line it up so that it works. It's that sensitive. Whereas this one doesn't seem to matter. I can point it left, right, you know, up, down. It doesn't really seem to care. So uh, overall... You know, either of these work. This one's the least common to work. And then if you need to get help with being uh, eligible for this, then you should look around um, different addresses for the service address so you can get it. And, um, you know, I guess pick any big city. You can pick L.A. You can pick um, smaller cities like Ann Arbor and uh, try some different addresses that you find on, on Google Maps. And um, I think eventually you'll find one that you'll be able to sign up for the Verizon. Then you can ship the unit to yourself. Whenever Verizon finds this video, they'll probably uh, not want me to, to keep saying that. But that's the secret for now um, to get these devices if you really want them. So let's show the speed test real fast of why I pick this one over this one uh, from a speed and latency standpoint. If you have any questions with, um, you know, any of these devices, things I didn't cover, I could talk for hours about this stuff. So uh, I will leave it up to you guys to put some comments down below. I'll try to answer those if I can. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and even TikTok. It's a Nader Tater channel. Those are my um, call names as well as NaderTaterChannel.com. So all those are ways that you can interact with me some more and uh, have other forms of communication as well as some giveaways and other stuff that we do uh, every once in a while. So um, thanks for watching. Here's the speed uh, result comparison and take care. All right, so I'm on the Verizon network. So I have my Verizon gateway and the T-Mobile gateway up in the loft and I'm in the basement. So I actually have ethernet ran from the basement all the way up to the loft and Right now it goes from Verizon directly to my main Asus router. That router has all of its quality of service turned off. And I'm doing that as trying to get a fair comparison between the two without my router, you know, trying to do any kind of, um, you know, handling of the data. Now, you could argue that either way, that maybe I should have it on, maybe I shouldn't have it on, but it's off for, for what that matters. And that typically will make my buffer bloat worse if I don't have that on. So this is a comparison here um, with Verizon starting out and doing this buffer bloat test. I'll go to fast.com, I'll go to speedtest.net and show you real quick what kind of speeds I'm getting uh, at the same time of day. 
And you know, one thing to note with all of these speed test results, you'll see I'll do three different speed tests uh, right now. I'll get different answers on all of them. Sometimes they'll be really close to each other. Sometimes they'll be far apart. It really is going to vary. Um, and it's because they use different servers, you know, so some servers are going to be, um, you know, closer to you and maybe they'll have a little bit better ping or the servers will be loaded up really high. And so that actually hurts your speed. And it's not just your connection that matters to that. So um, something to know that I like to look at an average over time, you know, not just a single uh, run. So like, you know, for example, right now, I just got um, 250 megabits per second down. I think when I tested it a few minutes ago, it was like uh, 210. And my active download latency was like a plus 34 or something. Um, so it's it's worse right now than it was before. My upload's about where it was before um, in the 20s. And so that 97 download puts me into a buffer bloat C, whereas when I tested it you know, 10 minutes ago, it was a buffer bloat score of B. But that's going to vary, and I've shown a video of how you can improve this with my ASUS um, adaptive quality of service. I won't cover any of that now, but let me go to fast.com and see how, um, how that one works. All right, so this is fast.com, which uses a Netflix server. So you're basically connecting to Netflix, and you'll actually see if your ISP throttles you for Netflix. It will show up here. Right, so I've seen that before with the lower grade Verizon one. So let me go to the more info here where I can see both the unloaded and loaded ping. And in in most cases, this loaded ping is fairly similar to the um, buffer bloat, you know, the active one. And you can change your settings here as far as if it's pulling this loaded ping on upload or download. But, um, you know, in this one um, semi jives with what we just saw. I think it was 97 a second ago. And here it's showing 109 milliseconds increase from unloaded to, to loaded. So then download. So, you know, this is very similar. So that's good speed here. And the last one I'm going to check is speedtest.net. All right. So you can see here all three of these were actually pretty similar. You know, I spoke at the beginning how... Um, they're not always necessarily um, very similar, but this one is fairly consistent, you know, 230 to uh, 250 um, megabits per second download, and then upload we had 19, 19, and 20.8, uh, so uh, very close there, and um, let's see what T-Mobile does. All right, so now I am on the T-Mobile home internet. I'm on the Nokia one and it is in stock form so no external antennas I'm doing that on purpose for this test they are side by side on a little um, nightstand up there and I want to compare them as stock uh, again my Asus has no quality of service enabled so this is literally I just took the Ethernet cable out of one and I plugged it into the other no other changes here so let's just run this test and see how it goes on this buffer bloat test and then I will go over to the um, fast.com and speedtest.net. All right, so one thing to mention on the Verizon is I turned off the DHCP server on that unit, and I was getting like half speed when I had both that one running DHCP and my ASUS setup running DHCP. On Timo, I don't have that issue. I, I won't get into the details right now, but just know that uh, maybe that is one thing that is not stock is I do have... DHCP turned off on Verizon. You cannot turn it off on the T-Mobile one. So um, I have that extra layer of NAT going on. Okay, so there you go. You can see my latency for download is much higher. I'm in that uh, close to 400 millisecond um, added latency when I'm downloading. And you can see my download speeds are slower as well. So and then upload again, uh, same kind of story. My latency is worse. And just for reference, I'm on B66 for my uh, primary band, and then I'm on N41 for my secondary. And I only get about two bars of service uh, with those two uh, cell metrics, even up there on the third floor. I can sometimes get three uh, if I get it just right. 
that's uh, stock without any external antennas. Obviously, if I plug in the external antenna, I get a little bit more of a boost, and I've seen faster speed, but the buffer bloat um, is slower. So let's go over to fast.com, just see where it's at. That old score was the Verizon one. All right, so you can see, obviously, this one is much slower here on um, the download. Latency is a little bit worse, but the loaded ping is actually good. And um, I've never seen it this good typically on the T-Mobile. So um, that just goes with some of the, um, the variants that you do see. But So that's a really good lat uh, latency score for loaded um, without the antenna especially. So let's go here to speed test and we will test this one out as well. Okay, and there we go. So not terrible. Um, you know, I would be very happy with those speeds. Typically there's not a lot of complain about there, but still compared to Verizon, um, those speeds are worse. And then uh, again, uh, knowing the um, issues with inconsistency and this latency is really one of the big issues I have with T-Mobile. If you have any questions with, um, you know, any of these devices, things I didn't cover, I could talk for hours about this stuff. So uh, I will leave it up to you guys to put some comments down below. I'll try to answer those if I can. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and even TikTok. It's a Nader Tater channel. Those are my um, call names, as well as NaderTaterChannel.com. So all those are ways that you can interact with me some more and uh, have other forms of communication, as well as some giveaways and other stuff that we do uh, every once in a while. So um, thanks for watching, and take care.